The US Army has wrapped up cold weather testing of its latest tank. The M-1A2 System Enhancement Package Version 3 tank, or M-1A2 SEPV-3, works just fine the subarctic temperatures of the Alaskan interior, Army testers concluded. Whether the tanks actually could reach a remote battleground like that in wartime is another question that's still unanswered. This new version of the classic M1 tank is really, really heavy. Too heavy for the trucks and recovery and bridging vehicles that are supposed to support it, according to the Pentagon's head of testing. Weight growth limits the tank's tactical transportability, the Office of the Director, Operational Test and Evaluation, or DOT&E, warned in a January report. The M-1A2 is the latest version of a tank that first entered U.S. service way back in 1980. In its earliest version, the four-person M1 packed a 105mm main gun and weighed 60 tons. Later versions added better armor and replaced the 105mm gun with a 120mm model. The tank got heavier. The SEPV-3 is the heaviest of all. With its new features including tougher armor, new electronics and a better auxiliary power unit, the V3 tips the scales at nearly 74 tons. Add extra bolt on armor, a rocket defeating active protection system, and a mine roller and the poor tank swells to a staggering 92 tons. That's heavy. Not too heavy for the army to ship, most likely by rail, at least one M-1A2 SCPV-3 to the Alaskan interior for 17 months of cold weather testing that ended in early May. The SCPV-3 was driven more than 2,000 miles in rugged conditions across three seasons of subarctic weather, fired hundreds of rounds for accuracy in extreme cold and underwent testing of its auxiliary power unit, as well as numerous other subsystems, the Army reported. The SCPV-3 works in the cold, a prerequisite for winter operations in Eastern Europe, the most likely place where the Army's heavy brigades might deploy for combat against a high-tech foe. Namely, the Russian Army. The U.S. Army possesses around 6,000 M1s, including 1,500 new-generation M-1A2S. The service has ordered around 300 M-1A2 SCPV-3s from General Dynamics GD-0.2%. Each new tank costs around $6 million. As a tank power, the United States is second only to Russia with its roughly 13,000 T-72s, T-80s, T-90s and other types. But Russia's tanks are lighter than America's tanks. A T-90 weighs just 53 tons. That makes it easier to move to and around a battlefield. The U.S. Army would lean on several modes of transportation to get an armored brigade equipped with M-1A2 SEPV-3s from its home base to a European battlefield. The tanks would ride on a train from their base to a port. A military sealift command ship would haul them overseas to another port railhead. Closer to the battle zone, logisticians would transfer the tanks from trains to heavy equipment transporters, in essence, really big trucks. Even nearer the fighting, the tanks would roll off the trucks and tread under their own power. While on the move, their crews would count on an ecosystem of supporting vehicles to maintain forward progress. Recovery vehicles for winching out stuck tanks. Armored bridge layers for helping the tanks cross narrow rivers and gaps where no suitable fixed bridge exist. Here's the problem. The M1A2 SCPV-3 is not transportable by current recovery vehicles, tactical bridges or heavy equipment transporters, according to DOT&E. The Army reportedly disagrees with this assessment. But there's no disputing that the M-1 is heavy and getting heavier, and that certainly weighs on its mobility before and during battle. The problem is not going away. Indeed, the next version of the M1, the SEPV-4, slated to arrive in 2025, adds even more new electronics and could weigh even more than the SCPV-3 does.